In this lesson, we'll introduce a set of special characters that we can inject into our strings. These are known as escape characters, and they're basically symbols that the Python interpreter treats differently from regular text. Escape characters always begin with a backslash. So earlier in the course, we actually saw one example of one of these special characters. We saw the slash n syntax for creating a line break in a string. For example, if I have a string here like this will begin on a new line, and I actually wanted to break this up across several lines, I can use that slash n syntax. So for example, I can put a slash n, again a backslash, followed by n in front of begin, and then let's say another one before the new, and then when I execute this on the right side, you can see that every place where I've put that slash n, Python has created a line break. So what this means is that Python does not treat this as a literal set of two characters. It does not look at it as a slash followed by an n. Rather, it understands slash n as a special sequence with a reserved purpose. And just like slash n, there are a variety of special characters or escape characters available for us to use in Python. For example, we have the slash t special character to create a tab or an indentation in our string. So I can do something like this, backslash t once upon a time. And what this will do, much like the tab key on our keyboard, which we've used so far, for example, when defining a block within a function body, what this will do is create an indentation and push over our string a little bit, almost like a tab on a keyboard. You may also recall earlier in the course, we talked about a scenario where we might want to include quotes in our string. For example, I may have a string like to be or not to be said Hamlet, and I may want to wrap this expression to be or not to be in its own pair of double quotes. I may literally want to use the symbol of a double quote within my string as a valid character. The only problem is, Whenever I try to wrap this in double quotes, Python is actually going to get confused. When I execute this, you can actually see an error on the right, a syntax error. And what's happening here is at the very beginning, you see how we have these two uh, double quotes in order. They're marked in green in my text editor. What Python thinks is happening is you're creating an empty string at the beginning because it sees a pair of double quotes, and then it gets confused about what to be or not to be is because it's not technically wrapped within a string. So earlier on, I advised that one solution to this problem is to simply wrap this entire string in single quotes. So if you have double quotes in the string, use single quotes, and if you have single quotes in the string, use double quotes. But there is an alternate solution to that problem, which is just using escape characters. So what we can do is, again, precede our double quote, or our single quote for that matter, with a slash. What this slash tells Python is to ignore the upcoming character. In this case, ignore the double quote. Just treat it as a regular quote. Don't treat it as a special character. Don't treat it as the closure of a string. Just treat it as a regular double quote. So when I put this here in front of this double quote as well, you'll notice my green double quotes at the very beginning and end indicate the quotes for my string, but the ones in purple indicate the quotes that I actually want to appear as quotes in my string as valid characters. So now we're gonna avoid the error, and you can see on the right we're gonna have to be or not to be wrapped in double quotes, followed by said Hamlet. And the exact same rule applies for single quotes. So I'm gonna copy this, and let's say our string uh, consisted of single quotes to begin and end it, so here's a single quote, and here's a single quote. Obviously this would work as well, but imagine we had single quotes wrapped around our uh, internal uh, to be or not to be quote. In that case, again, Python would run into an error because it thinks these two single quotes uh, represent the beginning and end of a string. All we have to do is put a slash in front of each one of those single quotes that are internal, and Python is going to know that it's, that it's a regular single quote and just belongs here. We can also place a backslash in front of a backslash if we want to literally print a backslash. So for example, right below here, I can do print. Let's print a backslash. And what I'm gonna do here is just put two slashes in a row. This first one is act, acting as an escape character for the upcoming character. So it's making sure that the backslash isn't misinterpreted and that it's properly treated as an actual backslash. So now you're on the right side, you're gonna only see a single backslash. The first one in purple that we see on line seven is making sure the second one is properly printed. The next topic I want to talk about is raw strings. So sometimes we may be dealing with strings that are automatically going to include slashes. One example is file directories on a Windows computer. So you may have a variable in a program like file name, and it may read something like this. It may be C, and then slash news, slash travel. Maybe this is a directory on your 
Windows computer. The only problem here, as you might imagine, and as you can see from the visual indicator in my Visual Studio Code text editor, is that Python is accidentally going to interpret my slash n as a line break and my slash t as a tab. We saw that a few minutes earlier on line number three. So what we need to tell Python to do in this case, not just escape, but really just to treat this string very literally. Just interpret it as a normal combination of characters and just treat the slash and the n as just that, as just a slash and an n, not as a line break. So in other words, this is a reversal of everything we've talked about so far in this lecture. This is how we avoid the Python interpreter accidentally treating some of these special characters in our strings as actual special characters. So what we do is we create a raw string. The reason it's called raw makes sense. It's because it's raw. It's down to the elements. It's down to the basics of what a string is. It's literally just a bunch of characters without any special, you know, interpreted special characters in there. So what we can do is put a single letter in front of the double quotes before the string actually begins, and it's going to be R. R is short for raw. So what raw means is, again, don't interpret any of the special characters, Python. Just treat it as a whole bunch of text together. So now when I execute this, you're going to notice, of course, I need to actually print file name for it to be visible on the right side. When I print this, you're going to see it's going to say C slash news travel and that slash N and that slash T have not been interpreted as either a line break or a tab because we have escaped them automatically by treating the string as a raw string, right? Raw just basically means Python, look at this string. Don't worry about any of these special characters. I don't care if there's any backslashes, just treat it literally. Every slash is a literal slash. Every slash T is a literal slash T, et cetera. It's nothing special. So that's what we do if we want to avoid Python reading our special characters. We just put an R in front of our double quotes or our single quotes that begin and end the string. Finally, I want to show you how we can break up our code across multiple lines again by using a special backslash symbol. So let's say I have a couple variables in my program, like some random number, which I'm going to set to five, then some obscure calculation, which I'm also going to set to, let's say, 25, then some additional statistic uh, fetched from somewhere. That's a good descriptive variable name, and I'm going to assign that an integer of 10. And maybe I want to have a calculation in my program called final that's going to add up all of these numbers together. And I may feel like my line is getting a little bit too long and a little bit complicated. You can see it's even running off the screen and it's hard to read. So what I can do is simply put a backslash and a good place to put it is right after an operator like the plus sign. And that backslash allows us to break up the line and not have it be misinterpreted by Python. So what I can do is break off that line right here, maybe add a little bit of tabbing so that all of my variables line up. Let's put another backslash right here after my second plus, after my second addition operator, break this up. And now what we've done is split up that single line, that single expression uh, into multiple lines using this line continuation character, this slash n. It breaks a statement on to the next line. And in fact, the Python uh, style guide has some recommendations as far as how long your lines should be. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in the course. But if you notice that your line is visually getting too long and a good marker for that is if you have to scroll left and right to read it, then it's a good idea to break these things up over uh, multiple lines. In fact, as well, some another problem you might run into is whenever you're feeding arguments like this into a function and it's taking up a lot of real estate on your screen. So for example, I may have a print function and I may want to print some random number followed by some obscure calculation followed by some additional statistic. In this scenario, since these are arguments to a function, Python actually knows where one ends and where the next one begins due to the commas. So you can actually break these up normally. But uh, in other words, you don't need the, uh, the backslash here. But again, the same rules apply if you do see that it's taking up a lot of space on a single line. You can break it up in this case just by pressing the enter key and bringing some of these arguments onto their own separate lines. And different code bases have different standards as far as how they prefer you break up arguments like this. Uh, in order to uh, make sure that the code reads as cleanly as possible. But that's all there's to cover in this lesson. We introduced you to a couple escape characters available in Python. Again, these are just special characters. Uh, when Python encounters them in a string, it treats them differently. It doesn't treat them literally. So for example, we have slash n for a line break. 
We have slash T for tab. We have a slash single quote in order to escape a single quote. We have a slash double quote in order to escape a double quote. Same rules apply for slash slash to escape a backslash. If you ever want a string to be taken literally and you don't want Python to accidentally interpret some of its slashes as special characters, you can put that R in front of it for raw string. And finally, you can use a backslash to break up expressions across multiple lines. That's really all there is to cover in this lesson, quite a lot, but it's been a blast. So I will see you in the next lesson.